Welcome to Barley and Hops. Today we're going to make wine. As a matter of fact, we're going to make a cranberry wine. And this one is so easy, you can do it at home. And we wanted to demonstrate exactly how to do this so that you can make your own wine. A really good friend of mine, Roger Beckeris, brought in a bottle of his cranberry wine. And uh, you can look at this and you can see how clear and how beautiful that is. And he's given us the recipe and we're going to make it right here. We're going to show you exactly how easy it is. This is a delicious exquisite wine. It's a great after dinner wine or dessert wine or even one for if you just want to sit around and have a, a you know a conversation with someone you can sip on some really nice wine. So uh, and he's got his own label and you can make your own labels as well. So we're going to put that aside but I'm going to show you what the ingredients are and then we're going to get right to making this. We've got 12 cans of frozen cranberry concentrate. Uh, and they come in these small cans. You can find them in your freezer section of your local grocery store. Um, I bought these at HEB and I paid $20.16 for 12 cans. Uh, I, I didn't get a special, <laughs> but normally they do run specials. So I've got that. I've got 10 pounds of uh, corn sugar and I use corn sugar as opposed to table sugar uh, because I trust the corn sugar. It's only been processed once as opposed to uh, table sugar and we'll leave that for another discussion. But this is really, high, it's highly fermentable and it goes in well with wines. I've got some water. Of course, we're going to add water to it because we've got to bring it up to six gallons. Um, Later on, when we go to stabilize, we've got uh, potassium sorbate. Uh, and this is a quarter teaspoon per gallon, um, or potassium metal bisulfite. Um, both of them do exactly the same thing. This is how you, uh, we call it kill the yeast, but really what you do is you cocoon it so it doesn't re-ferment. But it prevents fermentation, and you can also use it as a stabilizer and um, a sanitizer if you're using fresh fruits. But today we're not. Uh, but these two will come in handy later on when we get ready to bottle. So I'll put those aside. Uh, I'm going to use the EC1118 yeast. Uh, it's $1.65. It's a real small pack, but it'll do six gallons. This is a universal, really highly fermentation, uh, highly fermentable uh, yeast strain that really do goes well with uh, fruits. That, I've got some yeast nutrient, and I'm only going to use about a half a bag of this. So uh, th this really comes in handy. It provides all the free amino nitrogen that uh, your yeast are looking for. It really provides a good, healthy environment so you get a really good yeast colony uh, developed real quick. Uh, I'm going to have my stirring paddle. Uh, I'll have a wine thief, and my wine thief is so that I can insert that in into the uh, fermentation chamber. Uh, and check the specific gravity because we always want to check the gravity before and after. Uh, that's the only way we can tell if our yeast are really viable and what the alcohol content is. Of course, my hydrometer. And last but not least, I might mixed up uh, star sand. This is my sanitizer. Uh, this comes in a small container here, about eight ounces. Uh, it's one ounce per five gallons. Uh, so it's, use it very sparingly. But what's great about this stuff is this is a contact sanitizer. So as soon as you spray it onto something, you can go ahead and use it. They use it in hospitals, restaurants. Uh, home brewers use it exclusively for all of their stuff. So and, and the way you actually use this, and I, I, I talk about this all the time, is whenever I get ready to use a paddle or a spoon, I give it a spray, a shake, and now it's time to use. So it's a contact sanitizer. Works really good. Now I've also got my fast ferment here in the back and you'll see that I've already cleaned that. I've sprayed it. So it's, it's just going to sit there now. It's already sanitized oh, and ready to go. Back. Yeah, look, we're getting ready to start this now. I'm just doing the final touches of putting my uh, fast ferment together. So I'll put the ball on the bottom and I'll give that a good, nice, uh, good tug. Um, these are the ingredients. Again, we've got 12 cans of uh, cranberry concentrate, frozen concentrate, and then we've got 10 pounds of sugar. Uh, I'm going to move all this stuff out of the way, and then we're going to get to adding uh, our ingredients. Um, and you'll see, uh, this is just so easy. Uh, it, it goes in so easy, and it's uh, so easy to mix. Of course, you just pull off these, uh, pull off these plastic tubs, and... And by the way, you know, while we're doing this, I'll tell you, uh, you know, I, I usually lay out a piece of plastic and I just use a nice, a nice trash bag. I just pull it out, lay it out, and then spray it with my sanitizer. That, that cleans everything off. So we'll start adding these. There goes one. Uh, and we'll continue to add these until we get all 12 of these inside the uh, fast ferment. And then we're going to let them start to uh, thaw out. Uh, you'll notice that they'll thaw out pretty quick uh, because they are very viscous. Uh, so there's not much water, so, and uh, tell you okay, what, we'll, we'll be down back to the shortly. last couple cans, um, and, and I wanted to stop right here and show you something. Uh, we're going to add this one. Um, 
and what I've done is I've got this jug of uh, warm water just so that I can pour it in. I've done this to each can, just pour it in there to get the last bit of that juice out of there because we want to ferment every bit of this. And we're going to make 30 bottles of wine when we're finished. Uh, so far, I'm in it for 20 bucks. Um, this last can was pr pretty challenging, as a matter of fact. Uh, and, and you may experience the same thing, you know, the little the little plastic deal that goes around the top, didn't come off, it didn't come off all the way, so I was having a hard time pulling that. So I just grabbed the, a, a, a box cutter and I just, just cut around the top of it, uh, and that'll open it right up. So if you had that problem, please don't fight with it and get it all over the place. Just get a, just get a razor, a really good sharp knife, and just cut around the top of the lid. It'll come, it'll come right off for you. So there we go. We've got all 12 cans in there, and uh, now what we're going to do is uh, this is going to start yeah, this, very quickly this is going to uh, thaw out and uh, we're going to start adding and I've got the rest of this warm water. So uh, when we're done, we'll be able to tell you exactly how much water it takes and we'll be back. We'll be right back. All right. Well, we've poured uh, we've poured three gallons of warm tap water in here because we knew that it was cold in the very, at, at the very beginning. And we're going to try to get this. We're going to try to balance it around a, a good 68 to 72 degrees. Uh, I've already used my paddle and kind of mixed it up. Now I stopped here because after three gallons of water, I want to give myself enough room to kind of still work with. So I'm going to add the sugar and, uh, and I pulled out my whisk. Uh, you can use the, the paddle or the whisk. The whisk kind of works real easy, but I uh, don't want to forget to uh, spray that. Give it a shake and it's ready to use. Um, now, and the reason that I use uh, the corn sugar is you'll notice that once you put corn sugar in here it doesn't matter if the water's cold or hot this stuff is going to dissolve almost immediately um, and I told you we leave it for another conversation for another day and now's probably a pretty good time to talk about it but uh, when, when you're talking about fermentable sugars you know I always get the question well you know will table sugar work absolutely uh, but table sugar is about 15 percent uh, fructose um, and, and it has a hard time, that's a complex sugar, and it has a hard time, the yeast have a hard time breaking that down. So they're going to eat the uh, sucrose, the low-hanging fruit, first. Um, but when it comes to corn sugar, um, corn sugar is just so fermentable and so easy to use, and it's only been processed once. So it makes a very, very clean um, addition. Um, if you took water and put water in a bucket, two buckets side by side, and you added about five or six pounds of uh, table sugar, uh, you'll notice that, believe it or not, you'll notice this, that the water is going to turn a greenish bluish hue. It, it, it's going to turn a color. Uh, and you're going to be surprised. You're going to go, how does white table sugar and clear water uh, turn to a color? Uh, well, that's all the, uh, all the additives and, and uh, through processing that's in the sugar that you just can't see. Uh, but if you did the same thing and you took an equal amount of corn sugar and you added that to your, uh, to your water and you stirred it up, you'll notice that it'll be crystal clear. Uh, and oh, by the way, it'll be crystal clear real quick. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot. Uh, because that stuff dissolves so quickly. Okay, so I'm going to whisk this around real good. Um, get those mixed up. And you know, while it, and I can see it down here moving. That's my corn sugar dissolving. Uh, and it dissolves really rapidly. So I got that thing going in a really good, like a cyclone in there. Uh, I'm going to use my paddle now that's still sterilized. Um, there we go. You know, mix that corn, little corn sugar up that's in the very bottom. There it is. Um, so now that we've got this, at this point, uh, while I'm here, I might as well add my yeast nutrient. I mean, it's, a, it's just a good time to add it. You can add it now. You can add it later. Uh, I could have added, actually added it at the beginning, but it really doesn't make any difference when you add it. Uh, but I highly recommend you use it. Uh, because what it will do is it will provide you with all the nutrients and everything you need for a very, very good fermentation. There goes about a half a bag of that, which is really going to be like two tablespoons, a good two heaping tablespoons. Uh, stir that up, I'll let that get good and mixed. And right now, we're at, uh, we're at 70 degrees, and that's exactly where I wanted to be. As I, remember I said 68 to 72? We're right at 70 degrees. Uh, so we're really close to pitching yeast, but what we've got to do, we've still got to bring our water level up so that we've got enough wine to fill all 30 bottles. Well, we'll there we back. go. We've added uh, that one last gallon, so it's just shy. There's, there it is. I'm exactly at six gallons right now. So that's just shy of five gallons, four. 4.75 uh, 4 gallons. Uh, I'm going to pour just a little bit more in there because we're going to fill this ball as soon as we open up that union down there. Um, 
So there we go. I'm just above six gallons. That's going to give me a full 30 bottles of wine uh, when we're finished. Um, I'm going to give it. Uh, I'm going to give it another spray here, a shake, and I'm going to give it one more mix just to make sure that I've got everything mixed up real good before we add the yeast. Now, the interesting part of this, and I want to caution you about this, if you're using a fast ferment, uh, make sure that you open up your bottom valve for the, uh, for the collection ball so the collection ball fills up with the wine as well. Um, I tried it one time before because I was testing it out to try to see what happens. If you leave the valve closed and you ferment, it will ferment and everything will work out just fine. But at the end of fermentation, when you open up the valve, it'll probably clog. Uh, not a big issue. All you got to do is find something sterile, stick down in there, you know, just, just to get the yeast to move and then it'll drop into your ball. But uh, for the sake of, uh, of effort, uh, I would say just open up the valve and let the ball fill up but because the yeast are going to eat and they're going to fall out the conical shape is going to cause it to go down into the ball it'll fall into the ball it'll make it really easy to pull that lees the uh, the dead yeast it'll make it easy to pull the lees off of your wine uh, when it's time for you to not really rack but rack uh, so now and remember if you're using just a standard bucket process I mean it's exactly the same way it's just we're just using two different vessels um, if you're using the bucket, do the same thing we're doing here, um, except you're, doing, you're leaning over, you're doing it in a bucket. Okay, I've got it good and mixed up. Uh, it's time to uh, add the yeast. No, no, we've got to take a hydrometer reading first. So we'll get on the I've already ready, sprayed it with my we'll sanitizer, um, and I've sprayed my uh, hydrometer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this. You'll notice it's got this small valve at the bottom, and what it does is when you insert it, it'll fill this tube. Uh, and it'll give you a place where you can drop your hydrometer. Um, in a bucket, you can actually drop the hydrometer in the bucket and check it that way. And just get your head down so you can see it. But it's really difficult in the fast ferment. Um, six of one, half a dozen of the other. Or you, could, you could pull some out. Uh, you could siphon a little bit out and put it in a, in a test cylinder. But I prefer to use the, uh, the wine thief because it's just so easy to use. There we go. Now I've got enough wine there. Um, Plus, it makes a great shot glass. All right, uh, we're going to drop our hydrometer. And here we are. We're at 1 1.120. 1.120. 1.120. So uh, that's way above uh, what you would normally uh, ferment for beer. Uh, but 1.120. Is, uh, is really going to be a good stout uh, wine. And it all depends on how, how far we let that ferment down. You know, because dry wines will go all the way down below one, which, uh, which will make them dry, which means all the sugars are fermented out. Uh, we have an option. We can stop it a little early, uh, 1.004, 1.008-ish, um, and that'll make it a little bit sweeter. Um, or we can just let it ferment all the way down, then we could back sweeten it. But we got to make sure we use potassium sorbate, or uh, potassium metabisulfite, so it doesn't start to, it, you add more sugars, uh, you know, your yeast are gonna try to regenerate. So, uh, but we'll get to that when it's time to bottle, because uh, we'll do a video on bottling too. So, here we are, we're ready to uh, at that uh, point add in our time. yeast. Hey, please, please don't forget to take a hydrometer reading. Uh, I'm gonna open up our yeast, and uh, we'll get ready, we're gonna add this. Um, and I tell you, it's very, very important to take a hydrometer reading because if you call or if you come in and we're talking, you know, you've got a challenge. Probably one of my first questions are going to be, you know, what was your original gravity? Because it's the only thing that gives us a data point uh, to try to find out what may have potentially gone wrong or what's gone right with your, uh, with your wine. So please take a hydrometer reading. It takes a few seconds. Um, and it's also, it's, it's also pretty neat to be able to tell somebody, you know, you know scientifically how much alcohol is in your wine. Uh, so we're going to sprinkle this yeast right on the very top here, and that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to sprinkle it on there, and then we're going to let it go. So uh, last but not least, the addition of our uh, already pre-sterilized lid. We'll roll that on top. And before we add our uh, airlock, I'm going to get a really good seal on that. Before we add our airlock, I'm going to open up the valve. There we go. And we're going to let the ball fill up because it's going to suck air through here before we add our airlock. So there we are. And you know what? The only thing we got left to do is wait. 